morning guys, welcome to Survival Russia, welcome back to the channel and welcome to day 2 here at the Pioneer Camp and uh, welcome to my mosquito free zone <laughs> this is super awesome there's not one mosquito in here that is super cool we have to get some work done so I'll get dressed and uh, yeah, let's get some uh, water boiling and stuff like that not been raining, has at least something. It's relatively damp and just grey, white everywhere. Alright guys, so uh, it actually seems like the sun is breaking through the cloud cover just a little bit but uh, let's try and uh, take a look at the shelter stuff there, get something to eat and get to work. Alright, so here we have a stick I cut to length. The stick here will of course simulate the length of uh, logs that we're gonna use and they're gonna be placed principally like this. I've also off camera been cleaning this from bark a little bit and tra la 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 la. So as I tried to explain yesterday, we're gonna make a bunch of these logs hollowed out. Of course this channel here will divert the water and the ones on top will of course divert the water into these uh, channels here so to speak. The shelter is gonna be the width of that pine log over there. So we're gonna have a, an upright here. And an upright over here, of course, as well. Then we're gonna make some uh, a side wall, you can call it. But this side wall is not gonna be closed all the way up to the top of the shelter because, according to Horace Kephart, that is a very, very bad idea. There will always be a gap like this to let the smoke out of the shelter, so to speak, because there's, of course, gonna be a fireplace out here in front. We are going to make a woodsman's bed down here. And this we're most likely going to do before we cover up the, the roof completely. That's a little bit of blah blah blah. -ing. Let's get something to eat and uh, let's get to work. Ah, and maybe some of you guys have been wondering why I have not removed this little table over there or over here or something for ease of use. But that is simply because there's a little ant colony down there. They have a lot of eggs there, I noticed yesterday, and uh, if I disturb their home, the ants will immediately try and uh, relocate their eggs. And that could very well be <laughs> into my tent, so uh, that's the reason I've not been touching this uh, little uh, table. Yeah, the little mushroom table, I w by the way, made by hand with a silky saw and an axe. Yeah, why build this shelter? Why build an Appalachian uh, Horace Kephart shelter? Because as I said, I read about it in the book, and uh, in his book, and uh, he said that uh, both natives and, uh, and immigrants, you can call them, 
Right, they use the, this type of shelter in their palatians for a long, long, long time, and they last for years. And uh, I'm of course interested in something like that because uh, this is a great outpost for, you know, autumn, winter hunting, and all that good stuff you've seen. I mean, I've been sleeping here in minus 30 C's and all that good stuff, right? <laughs> Several times. So uh, I'm interested in uh, what you can say, real life shelters. Not fantasy shelters, you see a lot of, uh, of uh, fantasy shelters from uh, outdoors channels on YouTube, right? And uh, yeah, I like to, to build something which is real and experiment with something which is real. And this is uh, old stuff, right? But I'm gonna eat my avocado, cucumbers and uh, stuff like that and uh, get back to you guys. So let's try something really cool from my... Uh, you and subscriber sponsored microphones here. <laughs> I should be able to be something like 40, 50 meters away. Hello, hello. I found some amazing firewood for now and for winter. Some pine, just the right size, just the right thickness, just the right age. This is just golden dead standing. It's not been dead for that long. And it's not so thick that it needs transportation with the SRV. This is just super cool. Super awesome. We've been working some refill. Whoa, it's hot and it's humid today, very. So I get this back, we're gonna cook up some tea. We're gonna hollow out some logs, not these logs. Well, we're gonna hollow out some logs and... Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, I know it's uh, perhaps for you guys a little bit less than awesome that uh, now we left the camp and uh, now we are back again at camp and uh, you have not been with me out there but uh, I simply cannot uh, record everything and it's dark in there and uh, it's not really great but we're gonna have a cup of tea here and uh, then we are gonna do some work here at camp that's gonna be awesome I also realized I had to charge this camera it was down on one bar which was of course not so great, so uh, that's another good reason to leave you behind at the camp and I go out and do the heavy work. <laughs> uh, what is wrong with mosquitoes? Why are they so retarded? Every time you make some food or have some very, very hot water, tea, coffee or whatnot, mosquitoes like, oi, I'm gonna go down there and get burnt and killed. I don't know what's wrong with them. But anyway, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get out. I'm gonna get out and I get one of the trunks back and uh, I'll show you how I, I split them. It's going pretty well with the basswood. And that is one of the things that uh, Horace Kephart was writing in his book. That is that uh, it's of course important for this specific type of shelter to use some wood which splits well, which does not run out. I'm just trying to prepare as much work as we can do here at camp. It's green tea. Green tea with jasmine and mosquitoes and a little bit of smoke flavor. It actually tastes pretty awesome. I don't know if it's the mosquitoes who makes a big difference. All right, guys, so we're back at camp with a log. It's by far better to split them and all that stuff out there because they're, of course, a little bit heavy. Most of them are from uh, from uh, trees which have been blown down. As I always say here, we're on a hilltop. But uh, we have two axes, two wedges. I've been cutting with a chainsaw here, from one end to the other. I'm not showing any chainsaw operation because of my uh, lack of 
of safety equipment and you guys will scorn me for that and rightfully so but uh, I don't even have any and uh, yeah, I have to get some of course it's expensive though and uh, blah 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 I have to buy it online there's not that much safety equipment here the loggers around here they don't use it so uh, yeah that is what it is but uh, let's see how we split this guy here But actually to think, I'll turn it around and split it a little bit from the from the other side. According to Kephardt, it's a must to split from the thick end to the thin end. And as written in his book, he don't know why, but that's just how it is. <laughs> but uh, I will uh, drive the X in a little bit on this side here. Then turn it around and uh, start splitting from the other side. So we turned it around. And I'm not using too much force. Which is, it's, it's really a good idea to use too much force. Both when working with wood and in life. It's of course also easier to to hit the line there in the groove when you're not using too much force. That's it. And as you can see, we have a pretty nice clean split. Now we of course just have to take some material out in the middle. So, for taking material out in the center, I'll take this big heavy heater axe and hit with the lower part at an angle from this side and then I'll do the same from the other side. And then we'll work with this little guy here. This is of course very small, but it's, it's okay. And happily, basswood is of course soft. And obviously splits pretty well, but this is just to show you guys real fast, because we're gonna continue this tomorrow, not this evening here. This is for dang sure. All right, there, guys. So uh, it's late again, 10 o'clock. We're cooking up some food. Same story as yesterday. If you don't know what we ate yesterday, go on. Uh, Look at the video, check the video from uh, yeah, part one, so to speak. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be onions, fried onions, fried jalapeno peppers with beans and pork. But dang it, it's hot. I'm drying out my clothes once again. I don't know if you get blinded by the backing light or what. Just hope not. But that's what we're doing. Cooking up a scren, drying clothes for the second time today. Here we have some onions frying with jalapeno peppers. We're not gonna make a big story out of this today. But uh, what we're gonna do is that we are gonna we're gonna spice it up with uh, with some beer because I have a bottle of beer donated by Mrs. Survivor Russia. Talk about having an awesome wife. So the food is cooling down a little bit. And we have a beer here, yeah, it's in a plastic bottle. I remember you were commenting in one of the videos that are oh, beer in plastic bottles, classy. But who brings beer in glass bottles this far? I certainly don't. But let's try it out. That should be a good indicator on uh, how our fridge works. It's of course not 5 degrees C, but it's cold or cool, which is pretty cool. <laughs> then I think we'll get the food. It looks something like this. It looks like 
beans with some uh, garlic and pig meat and fried onions with uh, fried onions with jalapenos. That's what it looks like. It's most likely also what it's gonna taste like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is of course super awesome. This is like a 10 minute meal. I think it's faster than making all this mountain house stuff and so on, so on, so on, so. Which I will talk about in a different video. So this is how I clean my skillet. If it should be of interest to anybody when I'm done eating, I just fill it up with water, boil it off, and then I oil it up again. I am full, that's for dang sure. And uh, I think we're gonna ditch the rest of the beer here because I'm not gonna drink one and a half liter of beer before I go to bed. And I'm certainly not gonna save it for tomorrow. So don't tell Mrs. Survivor Russia. Actually, it's been quite a tough day. <laughs> Actually, it's been quite a tough day. But let's take a look at the shelter tomorrow and uh, all that funky stuff. So guys, please check the link in the description. Please consider supporting the channel and uh, the upcoming channel projects. And until next time, get out and train, get it done. Do something awesome. And uh, thank you very much for your time. See you in the next video, guys.